Eighteen more teenage girls say that they are suffering acute physical side effects from the controversial HPV anti-cervical cancer vaccine administered in our schools. The girls' parents came forward after the Sunday Independent revealed similar claims from 131 young women last weekend. The fresh allegations come as a senior doctor in Denmark, where the Gardasil drug has been replaced by an alternative, has linked some chronic symptoms to the vaccine. A TB3 documentary, Cervical Cancer Vaccine, Is It Safe?, was aired this week. On the line to me now is my next guest, and she is Anna Cannon, and she is a spokesperson for the group Regret. That's a group representing parents all over the country, and the the acronym stands for Reactions and Effects of Gardasil Resulting in Extreme Trauma. Good morning to you, Anna, and thank you for taking the call. Good morning. Thanks for having me on. How old is your daughter? Um, Molly would be 18 years of age in February. Um, She got her third vaccination in um, April 2011 and has had a long list of ongoing health issues since she's been hospitalised five times, uh, long periods of time, uh, each time with a a series of debilitating and chronic symptoms that correspond directly to the manufacturer's own list of side effects which were not given when we signed the consent form, unfortunately. Such as? Such as uh, she started presenting with severe headaches, hot flushes of the face, rashes, uh, nausea, stomach pains, balance issues, dizzy spells, fainting, nosebleeds, muscle legs, weakness, locked jaw, uh, low blood pressure, and she then contracted pancreatitis, which is potentially a life-threatening condition, and that was in May this year. Now, you say these weren't listed anywhere prior to you as parents giving consent. That's right. Uh, when we're and had the company at the time actually published? Oh, yes. Um, there is a, with every box of medication you collect in the pharmacy, you get a patient information leaflet folded in the box. For Gardasil, there's a patient information leaflet, which clearly outlines a series of 21 uh, quite serious and potentially long-term side effects. But what we get as parents from the HSC is uh, a sales brochure, I call it, with uh, five more on the day, should we say, uh, mild side effects that can be treated with paracetamol and neurofin or ibuprofen. But as a, I mean, this is not to take away from your pain or your daughter's trauma and pain, but as a percent, percentage of the total, total number of young women at second level schools who actually received this vaccine, is that percentage very high of those who are suffering like your daughter? Well, what's interesting is that it's not only Ireland that's presenting with this uh, problem. You mentioned Denmark. We have 1,100 girls now being treated in Denmark for suspected Gardasil injuries in five regional centres set up specifically to deal with these girls. We have kids coming forward in Spain, Italy, US, Canada. Uh, The figures are growing every day. But, I mean, in regret, yesterday we would have been 150 approximately uh, children registered with us. Uh, the emails are absolutely flowing in now from the documentary last night, and I'd say we'd be close to 200 at this stage, with parents who are realising that the list of symptoms that their daughters are experiencing, and all, including my own daughter, were perfectly healthy and sporty and high-achieving girls prior to this vaccine, and are now presenting with a very similar health profile. Now, the HSC and other health service authorities maintain that Gardasil has, quote, a good safety record, unquote, and that most common side effects, including fainting, headaches and nausea, are localised to the time of administration. An HSC spokesperson is quoted as saying, spokesperson, the HPV vaccines have been licensed for almost 10 years. They've been assessed repeatedly as having an excellent safety and efficacy profile by the World Health Organisation. There's been no evidence that the vaccine causes long-term side effects. The girls in question should be referred to by their GPs to the relevant HSE specialist. Well, the problem there is when you look at the own uh, the manufacturer's own safety data, for example, in the trial that was done in 2010 with 11,000 girls injected with Gardasil, one in 30 presented with serious adverse events. They are serious side effects. And one in 40 presented with a new autoimmune condition. So, I mean, it's not a coincidence that our daughters are displaying this long list of symptoms exactly as outlined on the patient information leaflet where we are advised that we should go to the medical profession or health professional should our kids uh, experience any of those side effects. And when we do bring them to the doctor, they are being fobbed off or dismissed or it's all in their heads. Um, Answers can't be found and they're called coincidences. But I mean, on one hand, we're saying there are side effects. 
that's what the manufacturer is saying themselves. And on the other hand, we now have a, a growing number of girls and numbers growing every day as parents realise that their daughters are not an isolated case. Again, the Sunday Indo uh, quotes a doctor of research at the Friedrichsberg Hospital in, in Denmark, Dr. Yes. Jesper Mehlen, as saying that we have noted a pattern of symptoms in a relatively large group of patients and that these symptoms seem to have a temporal association to the vaccination. We've also noted that the same set of symptoms are seen in other countries, but under different names, chronic fatigue, uh, fibromyalgia, chronic regional pain syndrome, uh, uh, some other one. And he said, however, Dr. Melson also stressed that medical experts are unable to definitively confirm the symptoms are directly caused by the HPV vaccine. vaccine. Yes, but uh, because they are so concerned about this in Denmark, where they have seen a large group, or they also had a documentary coming out this year, which um, increased the numbers. Usually, I think at least one in 500 are experiencing a long list of side effects over there now. They have issued an independent investigation. Uh, approximately a million euros have gone into an independent investigation where they are going to release and public that data in April. So they are working around, around the clock to link, to officially link the, the symptoms to the vaccine. And, uh, you know, I often say it's like a girl gets knocked down by a car on the road and uh, she's unconscious for 30 minutes. From that day on, she has seizures, fainting, severe headaches, and she was perfectly healthy before. It goes to court and the lawyer representing the insurance company is trying to make this look like a coincidence. You know, that will be laughed out of court. So I think these girls, at the very minimum, deserve duty of care from the Minister for Health and the HSE. They need help. They need long-term medical treatments. They need to be assessed. We need financial help for families who are on their knees after as much as five or six years struggling to find answers and medical help for their daughters. How has this impacted on your child's education? Oh, I'm actually finding it really hard to talk today because the documentary was very upsetting. You know, it was very hard on the girls to go out publicly and talk about this. We have girls who are so sick now in the groups that they're only up half an hour a day, get out of the house maybe 30 minutes a week. Um, it's affecting their education hugely. We have a huge percentage in the group of girls who will never complete their leaving search. In my case, my daughter is struggling with a huge number of days absence. She's in leaving cert here. Um, it's very hard to get understanding from the school um, and from her peers in that you don't have an official diagnosis. So on top of all the health issues she's struggling with, she's also experiencing isolation issues. And that's a really hard burden to carry for these kids. You know, then they go to the doctor and they're told this is psychosomatic and it's all in their heads. You know, it's irresponsible. OK, we'll leave it there. Anna, thank you very much. Uh, we wish you and your daughter and the rest of the girls very well. Thank, thank you for you joining very much. us this morning. Bye-bye. Thank Bye-bye. you for having me on. You're welcome. Bye-bye. That's Anna Cannon, spokesperson for Regret. That's a group representing parents all over the country. Uh, who's, and that stands the acronym Reactions and Effects of Gardasil Resulting in Extreme Trauma. And as we say, the HSC and the company deny that there's any link. Hi, folks.